textbook says there are mutations, and they are the original source of variation in populations. I agree, mutations happen, no question. But mutations do not produce any evolution. Mutations scrambling up are scrambling up existing genetic code. They're not making anything new. Here's a five-legged bull. That's a mutant. There's no new information added. He already had the information on how to make a leg. It just made one in the wrong place, that's all. It's not new information, it is scrambled information. Here's a short-legged sheep. Again, no new information. And by the way, that's not beneficial. He's the first one the wolf is going to catch. Right? Oh, boys, go. Here comes the wolf. Brrr. Oh, Herman didn't make it. Mm. There's a two-headed lamb. That's a mutant. It's not beneficial. Two-headed turtle. That's a mutant. Not ninja, but it's mutant. Okay. Now, <laughs> he's going to freeze first winter because nobody makes a double-neck turtleneck sweater. He's just not going to make it. Now, scrambling up the letters of the word Christmas will get you all sorts of different words, but it will never get you Xerox, zebra, or queen. The letters aren't available. This textbook shows the kids a four-wing fly, which, by the way, cannot fly. And it says, boys and girls, normal fruit flies have two wings. This mutant has four. This rare mutation, like most mutations, is harmful. And then it says, beneficial mutations are the raw material for natural selection. <laughs> no, hold on a minute. Why don't they show us an example of a beneficial mutation? Why did they tell us about the good ones and not show us a picture of a good one? Do you know why they didn't show a picture of a good mutation? Because nobody's ever seen one. There's never been one beneficial mutation. I, was, I said that in a debate one time, and this atheist said, Hovind, you're lying. He said, I can name a beneficial mutation right now. He said, people in Africa <clears throat> that get sickle cell anemia are less likely to get malaria. I said, that's brilliant, sir. That's like saying if you cut off your legs, you can't get athlete's foot. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> They're both negative, okay? Then they say evolution and natural selection go together. This one says natural selection causes evolution. That's a lie. Natural selection selects. It doesn't create anything. Natural selection is not a creative force, okay? Natural selection may be a stabilizing force, but it is not a creative force. Anybody with half a brain can figure that out. Natural selection cannot create any properties. It can only select. Now, this textbook says... Evolution by natural selection had occurred in just one year. Oh, they're lying. It says natural selection can lead to evolution. That's a lie. Natural selection selects. It doesn't create a thing. If you worked in a factory that made cars, how far is the Saturn plant from here? Pretty close, isn't it? How many of you were? Anybody here work in the Saturn plant? Okay. Suppose you worked in quality control. Your job was to check the car when they got done building it, you know, kick the tires, slam the doors, and drive it around, see if it runs. If you caught every single mistake, they don't, by the way, <clears throat> but if you did, okay, how long would it take that quality control process to change the car to an airplane? You say, Hovind, quality control can't change it to something else. Oh, I know. Only design engineers can change it. And God's natural selection is a quality control that will never change it to a different animal. It'll just make sure you get a good animal, that's all. They keep talking about survival of the fittest. Well, I agree, but that doesn't explain arrival of the fittest. And even survival of the fittest is pretty shaky. It's what's called a tautology, a sentence that means nothing. I'll show you. If you say, Professor, <clears throat> why did it survive? He says, oh, because it's the fittest. You know, survival of the fittest. How do you know it's the fittest? Uh, because it survived. How else can you tell? Oh, <laughs> I see. Look, if a whale goes through a school of fish and eats 80% of them, it's not survival of the fittest. It's actually survival of the luckiest. That's what's really going on out there. 